Thank you, Chair Three Thompson minutes. and members. Yes, ma'am, I'll try my very best to keep it brief. Um, there's a lot of overlap between some of the bills that we've heard today. Um, but where I really, um, and I'm here in uh, opposition respectfully to House Bill 13, there are elements of this bill that we like, um, including Chair, Chairman Dutton, you referenced a provision that would make clear where kiddos and educators hopefully can report concerns about th threat assessment and safety concerns. We represented um, a girl, a family that um, had a really unfortunate situation up in Dallas, y'all might have heard about. So we're very appreciative and the family is very appreciative of that particular provision. And we also, of course, are very supportive of increasing mental health supports and resources to support educators and ultimately support our kiddos. But what I really want to just take a moment and highlight is, um, you know, I was really struck, and I'm curious if anyone else was struck by this when the author was laying out the bill, um, the statement, which is, if we're going to ask teachers to shoot a child, we just got to pay them more money. And honestly, it brings tears to my eyes to think that that's where we are in the state of Texas. We're hearing a lot of testimony today on AI and uh, all this technology that might be able to spot um, weapons on our campus um, and millions and millions of dollars to be spent on these hardening measures. And we know it all comes from a well-intentioned place, to be very clear. Um, but we know what works for school safety. It's all about relationships. And of course, there are common sense school safety. The door's got to lock. We've got to make sure that we're keeping track of who's coming in and out of our buildings and provide appropriate training. Um, but I'm really concerned, um, and we continue to be concerned, that adding more guns, whether it's through school-based police um, or the diverse other array of professionals who we might be giving weapons. Um, again, teachers are uh, very opposed to being armed in these cases and being asked to be in this role. It's not appropriate for educators. It makes kids feel less safe when they know that their educators are potentially carrying a weapon. Um, and we know um, that adults, as well-intentioned as they are, make mistakes and have human emotions. And putting more guns in these campuses with our most vulnerable young people, um, as, a, as a mom, it, it, it terrifies me. Um, as a mom of black and Latino kids, it terrifies me. And as a mom of a child with a disability um, and a mental health-related disability that occasionally prevents behavioral challenges, it terrifies me. We urge you, instead of in sinking in massive, the fiscal notes for these bills and uh, you know potential constitutional amendment to address them, it's a significant investment of money. Um, and I urge this body, um, there's, there's so much so many wonderful evidence-based practices that will do a lot of good to support our students and our educators to, to not just react to the really terrible things when Thank they happen, you. Thank you, but for, to prevent them altogether. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, members. My name is Paige Duggins Clay with IDRA. All right. So I was looking at, uh, we got a handout of what you had sent us, and it says, decades of public health research strongly indicates that arming teachers will not prevent violent schools. In fact, this research research suggests that armed teachers would likely increase rather than decrease students' exposure to gun violence in schools, and then in parentheses, a citation, Swedler 2018. Thank you. So have you looked at Swedler 2018? I did. Okay. What does it say? I've read a lot of articles for today, so I can't tell you that. Well, the, the one that you are saying on the front page, what does that one say? The one citation that's on the front page here. Sorry, be, we read a lot of articles in preparation that spanned both the prevalence well, of Well, how about I, research. okay, so I'll tell you what Sweller 2018 says. 20, Sweller 2018 does not talk at all, okay, about that. It's literally a list of biographies, some articles. starts off by basically saying, well, the NRA is for this, so we're not. And then if you go through, it talks about guns used in a bunch of different occupations, but doesn't actually mention schools, does it? Uh, respectfully, Representative, I'm happy to follow up about that. And just the, the broader point that uh, arming teachers does not demonstrate safety. If Swedler is not the appropriate article, happy to correct that. But it doesn't but mention that at all. I mean, you're, you're going and putting on here Swedler 2018. And someone reading this might believe that if they go to Swedler 2018, that they would find what you were saying to be accurate, but that's not true, is it? Representative, if, if we've misstated that anyway, I'm happy to correct right. that testimony. Well, and I bring that up because I think you may have misstated the author when he was talking about that none of us, none of us, none of us want a teacher to have to do anything that they don't want to do. And none of us want a teacher to be in a situation where they have to choose between the life of one child or another child. 
That's not one of us have done said that. No, sir. And I, but, but I do think that is the reality that, that we're facing that, is that that's, that's what this bill is asking our educators to do. We are arming educators for the purpose of responding to children, primarily youth, who are in this behavior. And I'm just saying I, I understand the intent of the bill. But the bottom line is that's what we're talking about, and that's just an unfortunate place to be. And this is not the solution to addressing that issue in our schools. Well, I'd like to see some research that shows that. I'd be happy to follow Thank up you. with you, sir. Thank you. Chairman Landgraf. Thank you, Ms. T. Uh, I think to follow up on that point, uh, and you mentioned this in your initial testimony as well, but how many teachers under House Bill 13 are required to be armed against their will? Thank you for the question, Representative. You're absolutely right that no teacher is required by the plain text of the bill to be armed. Um, but as other testimony has made clear tonight, there is going to there is creating an incentive and a requirement for schools to create some kind of armed representative on campus. And we've heard testimony about the various needs of schools across the state, and we are very concerned that to the extent that there's not enough funding to fund officers who are trained, that there is going to be pressure on educators to be pushed into this program because $25,000 stipend is cheaper than funding a full law enforcement officer. And to be clear, we don't think that any armed officers on our campus is the solution to school safety. Well, and I, and I know, and that's very clear, and, and we can have a disagreement over that. Absolutely. And, Thank you. And you are here last week. I've always been impressed with your testimony. Thank you, sir. But I think <laughs> you, you've been misleading on, in some of your written citations, you've kind of been misleading on making the implication for those who don't have the bill in front of them that a teacher would be required under HB 13 to be armed against her will or his will. To the extent that that, uh, that I stated that, I don't believe that that is a fair characterization of my testimony, but that is not what I'm stating. But it is a, a fact that under House Bill 13 and under other bills discussed today, we are discussing arming educators for the express purpose of responding to active shooter threats. But not against their will, and that's a very important point. I don't, um, it's a, absolutely an important point, and it's not my testimony that this bill would require a teacher to be armed I'm against I'm glad that we're will. clear about that. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you for clarifying. I apologize for the misconception if that was the, um, if, well, that was what I stated. Thank you.